All right. Hello and welcome to the March 7th, 2023 Zoning Committee Work Session of the Charlotte, Mac Charlotte Mecklenburg Planning Commission. I am Philip Gustman, Chair of the Zoning Committee. This meeting is being streamed online on YouTube in accordance with the meeting statute. Requirements for notice, access, and minutes are being met through electronic means. We ask that everyone keep mics muted when not speaking. Please state your name when making a motion or a second. As an explanation of the zoning process, the public hearing on the rezoning cases that we are reviewing today have been held already by the City Council and Zoning Committee. This meeting is not a continuation of those public hearings, so there will be no public input unless the committee has specific questions. I would now like to introduce my fellow commissioner, my fellow commissioners. Tyler? Courtney Rose, Zoning Committee. Douglas Walton, Zoning Committee. R.J. Harvey, Zoning Committee. Terry Lansdale zoning. You are down two commissioners for because due to illness, so we will be your commissioners for the evening. And let's jump into staff introductions. Dave, I'll let you lead off. Sure. Dave Petten, rezoning manager. John Kinley, rezoning staff. Michael Russell, rezoning staff. Max Oliver, rezoning staff. Joe Mangum, rezoning staff. Holly Kramer, rezoning staff. Emma, Emma Canarahas, rezoning staff. Thank you, and let's move online, if we can have our staffers online. Jay Carpenter, CDOT. Patrick Monroe, CDOT. Travis Miller, CDOT. Isaiah Washington, CDOT. <laughs> Laura Harmon, Plano. Last CDOT person introduced themselves. I think we missed your name. Uh, Drew, Drew Ritter, CDOT. Perfect. Thank you. Anyone else? Good deal. That looks like that covers it. Uh, next up, uh, I guess I should ask if there are any, re or do we do the schedule first, I guess, because it's agenda item one and it's before the deferrals? Perfect. All right. Ladies and gentlemen, this is where we get to set our calendar or the calendar for the rest of the year. Uh, so I'd ask for the zoning committee to review the dates that are on the agenda before us or should be on everyone's agenda. And uh, we would need a motion to approve this calendar. It's Commissioner Welton, I'll make a motion that we approve the calendar dates as they are presented uh, in front of us as item one on our agenda. Commissioner Harvey, second. Properly moved by Welton, seconded by Harvey. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? This is our calendar. Congratulations, unanimous. Uh, all right, Dave, moving on to deferrals. All right, we just have two, I believe, for this evening. We've got 2021-209 uh, by Coastal Acquisition Entity LLC requesting deferral till April 4th. And 2021 213 by Goldberg Companies Inc. Uh, also requesting deferral to April 4th. I think that's all we've got. Anyone have comments or wish to make a motion about that? It's Commissioner Wells and I move that we accept the deferrals uh, as uh, stated by um, Mr. Patton. Commissioner Harvey, second. Moved by Welton and psych properly moved by Welton, seconded by Harvey. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that also passes. So those are deferred. All right. Get into the exciting part of the day, evening. Let's move on to item number four, rezoning petition 2022-008 by Ram Realty Acquisitions v. LLC. And we'll go to Joe. Thank you. This is approximately 26.9 acres located in the southeastern corner of Interstate 45 interchange with Steel Creek Road. Near the Charlotte Premium Outlet Mall. The current zoning is R3. Proposed zoning is NS and MUD O with three years vested rights. The 2040 policy map recommends community activity center place type. And the proposal is uh, includes four development areas, areas A and B, 
uh, proposed for NS zoning C and D for MUD O. Areas A and B uh, propose NS uses that may include one accessory drive through window with menu boards and or speaker boxes and an additional accessory drive through window without menu boards and speaker boxes. Uh, additionally, it proposes to allow an accessory ATM drive through lane for financial services use. Areas C and D propose up to 375 residential dwelling units that may be multifamily and or single family attached. Request an optional provision for de development area C to allow parking, vehicular circulation, and vehicular maneuvering between the buildings and structures and the I-485 setback. Uh, petitioner is requesting an additional one year of vested rights for a total of three. Limits building height to 70 feet. Proposing the following transportation commitments, extending Rigsby Road between Steel Creek Road and the Eastern property boundary, extending Paragon Drive between Rigsby Road and the Southern property boundary, an eight foot planting strip and 12 foot multi-use path along Steel Creek Road, and an eight foot planting strip and eight foot sidewalk along internal public streets. Also committing to a combination of windows and operable doors for a minimum of 60% of each street facing frontage. Uh, this is changes since the public hearing, not changes since the previous zoning committee meeting, but prior to the last zoning committee meeting, they did address all um, outstanding issues. They did fix the red line on the map, I noticed. So. Yes, we fixed that. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Next slide. Yeah, uh, staff, staff does recommend approval and be happy to answer any questions. All right, Douglas, go right ahead. Joe, general question. Um, it says um, development areas A and B are inconsistent with community activity center. Is it inconsistent because of a use or what factor? I noted you said something about drive throughs. I was just wondering if that was a factor or what, what's the exact inconsistency? Specifically, the drive throughs are inconsistent. Okay. All right. Any other questions? Okay. If we don't have more questions, um, did I have anything else on this one? No, I'm good. Anyone like to make a motion? This is Commissioner Rose. I'll make a motion. Go right ahead. Having reviewed the petition and considered the consistency statement prepared by staff to approve this petition, I move that we recommend approval of petition number 2022-008 as it appears before us and the adoption of the consistency statement as it appears before us. Harvey, second. Properly moved by Rose, seconded by Harvey. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? No. Well, no. Just as the, uh, <clears throat> the opposition opinion here, um, I'm going to express my concerns regarding the uh, drive through uses and uh, parcels A and B. I think they have that right uh, for this uh, particular zone rezoning and um, ask the petitioner to um, reconsider the these types of uses for this parcel. Thank you. That's good. That passes 4-1. Minority decision has been had. We good? All right. Excellent. Move on to number five, rezoning petition 2022-053 by Reyna Properties, LLC. Michael. Thank you. <clears throat> this is approximately 5.63 acres located on the west side of Prosperity Church Road, northeast of Mallard Creek Road. The uh, current zoning is uh, R3, single family residential. Proposed zoning is R17MF, multifamily residential. Um, the 2040 policy map recommends neighborhood one. Um, and so this petition is inconsistent with the 2040 policy map recommendation for the neighborhood one place type. Um, and currently they are <clears throat> Um, it would allow the proposal would allow 50 single family attached dwelling units with a maximum of 25 buildings. 
they do limit the building height to 40 feet. We're providing an eight foot planning strip and an eight foot sidewalk along Prosperity Church Road and an eight foot planning strip and six foot uh, sidewalk along Pinewood Lane. Uh, they are dedicating fee simple conveyance of all rights of way 50 feet from the center line of Prosperity Church Road to the city of Charlotte. Uh, they are providing uh, ADA compliant CATS waiting pad along Prosperity Church Road, uh, and they do provide architectural standards, including building materials. Um, there are no outstanding issues and staff recommends approval. We'd be glad to take any questions. Excellent. Any questions? I have, we'll go with Raven and Terry first and then. Oh, okay. Um, so, um, the driveway classification is the type 2 commercial. Is that correct for the. For the driveway on Pinewood. So, yeah, I'll let our colleagues at CDOT answer that. Did y'all hear that? Do we need to restate the question? Can, can you hear me? Oh, yes. yep, there you are. Good deal. Yeah, so I was going to look at the site plan uh, to the south. It calls it out as the type 2 commercial driveway. That's Great. Five. Thank you for that confirmation. Uh, that did just leads me to my uh, concerns over this is that um, that left turn out of this particular parcel um, with 148 feet. Um, that's that's a pretty tight left turn to to access um, that property. So my concerns are, are the proximity of the driveway uh, so close to um, the the major thoroughfare uh, to I think it's the west at that point. But I always try to get that correct. But um, just to, uh, that, that causes me uh, consternation for this particular project. Um, and uh, I don't know how the resolution at this at this time can happen, but uh, that is that is my concern for this one. Thanks. We actually had a meeting on this today, um, so the site access uh, is being coordinated with ourselves, uh, Council Member Renee Johnson, and the petitioner. Was there a resolution or any changes, or can you speak to that more clearly, or? Uh, there was not a resolution at this time. Um, the what's being reviewed is if the site access will move back to Prosperity Church as a right in, right out. But the exact details of that um, and any confirmation of that uh, happening haven't been uh, that hasn't taken place yet. Okay, thank you. Douglas. Uh, Michael, two questions. What's the exact inconsistency uh, for this? Is it because it's multifamily? I, I'm assuming. Yes, plan multifamily. Okay. All right. And uh, it's this uh, building form fits in, is consistent. Okay. Um, I may ask this question again before the night's over. Um, <laughs> 10 minute neighborhoods. And I was curious. There is retail close by, but is there a vaguely safe way to cross any of those roads? I guess would be, think, and is that a part of the plan? I, I didn't see anything on the plan for that. And this may be a CDOT question. I don't know. Well, I think if you you come down from Pinewood down Prosperity Church, you go to the, the little shopping center that has Indian, the Bojangles in it. Bojangles yeah. Indian restaurant, commercial okay. arts, a bank. And then at the next intersection, there's you can cross over and then come back up to the shopping center on the other side. Okay. Yeah, I was just, I I was looking at this and I thought, oh, that's at a turn. That's a great place to put a crosswalk. And then off of of whatever is dry wood or whatever it is up there, I that seemed like a good place, but I didn't see it on the map. So, but there you're you're saying there is a valid off map off map. Yeah transit or uh, way to cross the street. So, okay. Thank you. Got the 10 minute neighborhoods question in. That's good. Any other questions? I have a question. Go ahead. Rich. Um, I have a question about the roads and, and maybe this was answered on prosperity church. Is there any, um, 
um, is, are there any plans to widen Prosperity Church? Because it's a pretty dense area already, um, high traffic area already, um, just with what's going on over there without this, uh, without the new bill. So is there any um, thoughts of, of I, I don't know, maybe we working or widening Prosperity Church to help ease that? Yeah, that's a good question. I'll ask uh, Travis if he'd like to. They're saying yeah, come yeah, through there and you can go back up, mm -hmm. which that's a wide intersection yeah. there. Can you hear me? Yep. yep. Yes. Yeah, to, to the south there, there's a couple of um, state GIP projects uh, that would widen the roadways. Uh, I'm not aware of anything directly at this site's frontage, but there are some projects um, planned. And I guess my next question is, is that contingent on this project or is that just happening? Just, That's just happening. Gotcha. Okay. Thank you. Okay. Ready? Right yes. yes. Um, just uh, a question about the public transportation. There's a note about the bus stop being added on the, of course, on the project plan, but I don't know if one exists on the opposite side of the street already, or is this just, you know, we're just addressing the new thing. So I don't know if that's a CDOT or question or Kat's question. Once you get on. Kat's question. I, yeah, I'm not sure if there's a bus stop on the other side. Charlotte Explorer doesn't show one. But Charlotte Explorer doesn't show one. It doesn't, it doesn't they show usually one. kind of work out during permitting exactly where they're going to locate the, uh, Bus pad. Okay, the bus pad, and 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 then of course the subsequent question would be uh, crosswalk, because of course if we're now making them cross Prosperity Church Road. I mean, wishful thinking, but hey, just the <laughs> stuff we're putting out there, right? Okay. I think we have to keep asking for them. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, any other questions? Um, I do have a, a quick. Right. Follow up question with the interior of this site, just with a question regarding the, um, the bulb out uh, to access the solid waste and recycling area. Um, it's hard for me to understand if that can, if that is sufficient engineering to provide access for, for trash trucks. But I'm, I'm sure that the smarter brains than me have have done that. But perception wise, with my eye, um, is that is that important to? For consideration, or is that just a clarification issue? I mean, generally with the trash and re recycling, they have to show it that they have space for it. Mm -hmm. It during permitting, it it can move. Okay, and a lot of times, you know, they're already contracted to have rollouts. Sure, uh, but just they have to show us that they actually have have actual space for the trash and for recycling. Thanks. Question to follow up. Ahead. They have to put it on the site plan, right? Even if they don't implement it, they, That's have, correct. To it they, the they have to show it. And then if okay. they go with rollouts later, so yeah. that we don't have that issue that now they don't have a place to right. place it. All right. Thank you. Anyone else? And there were no additional changes since the last, correct? I mean, we've already covered everything on that. Yeah, they didn't have any so. outstanding uh, just issues. I know he surprised us with the, they're working on the moving of the entranceway. Thing. Yeah, that's a, a new gotcha. development. Okay. All right. Uh, any other questions or motions? This is Commissioner Welton. I will make a motion. Right ahead. Having reviewed the petition and considered the consistency statement prepared by staff to approve this petition, I move that we recommend approval of petition number 2022-053 as it appears before us and adoption of the consistency statement as it appears before us. And this is Commissioner Harvey. Second. Properly moved by Commissioner Welton, seconded by Harvey. All in favor, say aye. Aye. And opposed? No, we have one opposition. Terry, yeah, um, I have expressed concerns with this petition um, in that I feel strongly that uh, the the way the ingress and egress 
um, uh, uh, for Pinewood Lane, uh, it provides insufficient safety turning radiuses for vehicles entering and exiting the parcel. And until those issues of transportation are resolved, I don't think we can, um, I can support that it provides a safe and equitable uh, transportation options for this uh, zoning. Thank you. Thank you. That passes 4 1. We have our comments on the minority. Moving on to item number 6. Rezoning petition 2022 059 by Taylor Morrison. And we're going with back with Joe. Thank you. This is approximately 50.7 acres located on the north side of Garrison Road, west of the intersection with Horton Road. Near the proposed river district, this is the current zoning is mud. O. Uh, partially mud O there in the uh, pink and orange, and uh, also R3 in the yellow. The entire site is, is within the airport noise overlay in the lower Lake Wiley protected area. The proposed zoning is MX2 innovative, and those two overlay districts would, would carry through. The 2040 policy map recommends neighborhood one for most of the site, um, what's shown in the yellow and uh, also community activity center place type in the blue. The proposal is for a mix of up to 335 single family detached, attached and multifamily dwelling units at a density of 6.62 dwelling units per acre. Uh, limits building height to 40 feet, proposes the following innovative standards. Internal private streets will have public access easements, no minimum lot size, no minimum lot width. Public street frontage is not required for individual units. However, all units will be within 400 feet of a public or private street. Setback of 14 feet from back of curb along private streets for individual units. Minimum 30 foot setback from existing right of way of Garrison Road. Minimum five foot side yard and 10 foot rear yard from the property line. Prohibits vinyl as a building material except on windows and soffits. Limits blank wall expanses for all corner end units fronting a public or private street to 10 feet. Uh, also commits to the following transportation improvements. North, south, and east, west public streets with stubs to adjacent properties. 60 foot right of way dedication along Garrison Road. 8 foot planning strip and 12 foot multi-use path along Garrison Road and eight foot planning strip and six foot sidewalk along all other public streets. Proposes to include three elements um, of the following elements in amenity areas. Covered pavilion shelter, benches, picnic tables, fitness facility, yoga room, gathering room, pool, butterfly garden, and dog area. And provides a minimum of the 100 foot swim buffer or 60 feet beyond top of bank on both sides of Beaver Dam Creek to Mecklenburg County for a future Greenway Trail. So since the um, February Zoning Committee meeting, the petitioner has adjusted the placement of the different building types. They have quadplexes, duplexes, single family um, buildings. Um, on the site to more closely align with the recommended place types transitioning from quadplexes nearest the river district, um, the north of the site and the rear of the site to duplexes and single family style buildings um, there along Garrison Road where adjacent to existing single family residences. Um, staff is recommending approval of the petition. We feel that the petitioners made a concerted effort to more closely align with neighborhood one place type. Um, if approved, it would go to a neighborhood two place type. Uh, but we are in support uh, or recommending approval of this petition and be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. Douglas, go right ahead. This petition is inconsistent. And that would be because we're putting what, where, how, what, what makes this one inconsistent in particular? The, the quadplex. The element. quads. 
Correct. Even though a portion of those quadplexes would be on the community activity center place type, which would be consistent, the portion that would be on the neighborhood one place type would be inconsistent. Okay. All right. Because that I'll just say the map with little and I couldn't quite figure out what was it wasn't on top of the place type map. Um, okay. Is there any contribution to any kind of housing or anything that's related to this particular petition? Uh, financial contribution, let, let me put it that way. I am pulling up our staff analysis right now. Let's see here. There is a donation of $500,000 to the city of Charlotte's housing trust fund for affordable housing. Or could be a land donation of approximately just under five acres to a designated organization in coordination with the city of Charlotte housing and neighborhood services department for future future affordable housing opportunities. Okay. Uh, it's, it's actually to the uh, West side land trust. Oh, <laughs> Dave, I, the, the question I have related to that, and it, it may be a bigger discussion is, are we tracking these contributions and which ones go to the city, which ones go to neighborhood organizations and things of that nature? I, I, I just feel like we should probably be tracking that. Just one commissioner's. If it's to a action. private entity, not as I mean, we'll, we would track it because that would have to happen before we could issue a CO. Um, yeah. So that's that's the mechanism for it. Yeah. I I just I, you know it it would be good if somebody would come back and look at this and say, oh, here's where yes. the money went, um, <laughs> and whatever comments they might make after that. Yeah. Enough said. Questions? Yes, someone. Go right ahead, Harvey. Uh, th um, there's a, a new comment that says about the driveway connection, and it would need to be rezoned separately. Is that what we're saying? I just want to make sure I'm understanding this or looking at the right thing. Uh, on the outstanding issues, says, uh, there is a section that went through uh, uh, joining parcel, right? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah, and that's part of the driveway, but the actual building seemed to make it, but the the access to it does not. Uh, yeah. If you could read I'm this, sorry, I'm not. <laughs> okay. It's, it's a, a very mega, big document. Make it tiny. It, yeah. Was it in the transportation section? I'm assuming, or yeah, I'm just looking at our find something here and on the Can last you page. Maximum number of units. I'm I'm not seeing an outstanding issue related to a driveway. I don't. I'm not sure if uh, Jump if CDOT ahead. is aware of any outstanding issue. I jumped ahead. ahead. I jumped ahead. My bad. I jumped ahead. I'm all way down to the next one. My bad. <laughs> That's the next one. This is Patrick with CDOT. I'm really worried there. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Patrick, That's right ahead. Did, did we get the question addressed, or do you need me to yeah. answer? Yes, I believe we did. Thanks. Thank you. Can I ask CDOT, um, are, are there any plans for this road to be upgraded to a different kind of a road in the near future or anything of that nature? Um, just this is informational. I'm sure it's not going to happen next week. Yeah, so this project does have requirements to improve um, their frontages of roads to uh, um, two 11 foot travel lanes with the center left turn lane for each of their site access. There's also a project just south of here that went through rezoning a couple years ago, I think is getting close to permitting that's gonna be improving the entire stretch of Garrison Road. So there's some coordination back and forth between the two projects, but it will be improved um, to a upgraded section. Okay, I'm just thinking when you get off at 485 there, it's uh, it's um, small. <laughs> I guess that would be the way I would phrase it. Small yep. road. And and the city has a CIP project as well that's working on upgrades up towards uh, 485 and the West Boulevard connection. So there's uh, multiple projects that are working mm -hmm. together to improve the yeah. network. 
Yeah. Okay. Thank you very much. Terry, and then Roach. Great. Uh, this is for CDOT. Um, so maybe you can talk a little bit about um, Garrison Road's impact on future West Boulevard uh, extension and the Catawba Crossing. Uh, I have concerns that the Garrison Road and what we're offering here, while I certainly do appreciate the petitioners, transition from a two foot bike lane to a more substantial uh, bike lane uh, area for that. Um, I just think it's, um, I have great concerns about the uh, safe and equitable transportation piece as far as moving forward with this uh, with this change. So any uh, commentary on that perspective or, or opportunity for Garrison Road as my colleague had, had indicated uh, plans for the a different dynamic for Garrison Road. And it may be too soon. I don't want to put you on the spot, but it might be too soon to, to answer that. But yeah. Yeah, no, no immediate plans other than what I mentioned um, with the last question that there being multiple projects to improve um, the network out there and the facilities that are out there today. Uh, so we will be getting the additional multi-use path uh, to improve the bike facilities as well as the upgraded travel lanes for vehicles. Thanks very much. Yeah, and again, just for for the record, you know, I, I want to express concern about this uh, this area as I did before when we had a discussion. Is we really don't know what the river district is going to look like in eighteen months, twenty four months, until we understand whether or not the uh, Catawba Crossing is going to be a part of the mix uh, for this area. So it's it's that concern that um that 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 causes me some some hesitation about approving this at this time. Thanks. Commissioner Ridge. So the question I have is about affordable housing. So is the, the five acres, I know they mentioned that at the public hearing about the possibility of donating the five uh, acres to the city. And then now the, um, the uh, half a million, is there any affordable housing that's proposed within the quadplex or is that in lieu? I'm not aware of any. Okay, thank you. Any other questions on the committee? Um, and to be clear, the donation was to Westside Land Trust, was that right? Yeah, the latest site plan shows uh, two options, one to donate 500,000 uh, to, let's see, I just had that pulled up, sorry. Closed the wrong plan. Thank you for checking. Uh, but yeah, it was 500,000 to the, the land trust in West Charlotte or the other option was, let's see, the second option is a land donation for future affordable housing opportunities, either on site or off site. Uh, they would have to you know, mutually agree upon a site if it wasn't in this particular location. An MOU for such land donation will be executed by the petitioner prior to the first CO. So it'll either be a, a monetary donation or uh, a memorandum of understanding that they're working together to get a land donation together before any certificates of occupancy are issued. Okay, thank you. All right, committee. Any other questions? We're we'll looking for a motion then. Got it. Sure. Sure. This is Commissioner Harvey. Having reviewed the petition and considered the consistency statement prepared by staff to approve this petition, I move that we recommend approval of petition number 2022-059 um, as it appears before us in, yeah, I think we're good. Yeah. Oh. And the consistency statement as it appears before us. And the consistency uh, statement as it appears before us. Uh, this is Commissioner Wells, and I will second. Properly moved by Harvey, seconded by Welton. Is there any discussion? No further discussion. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Uh, no. 
Terry, go right ahead. Do so, you want yeah, to make your statement? I'm going to be the broken record here for this is that um, I don't feel that this parcel and the change provides a safe and equitable mobility for long term uh, associated with the um, the number of transportation issues outstanding uh, with Garrison Road and the impact uh, on Garrison Road this project will have. Thank you. Douglas, did you have a comment? I will just, uh, I voted in favor of this. I will um, also join in sympathy with uh, Commissioner Lansdale that um, this is going to change the general nature of this road. And I'm concerned about uh, the timing of the additional um, projects. And uh, I am uh, wishing that they would occur with uh, prompt timing. That's so I'm, I'm just joining in sympathy with that, that opposition, but not opposing the, the project. Thank you, Commissioner Welton. All right, we are 4-1, another approval. And moving on to item number seven, rezoning petition 2022-062 by Jeff Constanu. Back to Joe. Yes, uh, this is approximately 0 0.38 acres located on the east side of Nations Ford Road, north of Tyvola Road. Current zoning is R17MF. Proposed zoning is NS. The 2040 policy map recommends neighborhood one. The proposal is for up to 12 electric vehicle charging stalls and one accessory structure of up to 900 square feet for restrooms and vending machine. The electric charging stalls are to be covered by a canopy holding solar power panels. Building height would be limited to 40 feet, committing to dedication of 43 feet of right away from the center line of Nations Ford Road and implementing an eight foot planning strip and six foot sidewalk along the site's Nations Ford Road frontage. Commits to building materials of brick, natural stone, or synthetic equivalent or wood. Also committing to screening of electrical equipment pad from adjacent, prop adjacent uh, properties and the public street. And limits freestanding lighting fixtures to 21 feet and requires that they be fully capped, shielded, and downwardly directed. Since the public hearing, the petitioner uh, reconciled conflicting notes um, con to confirm that the building size would be a maximum of 900 square feet. Staff recommends approval and be happy to answer questions. Thank you. Yes, I think we'll all have a few questions perhaps <laughs> on this one. Maybe not bad, but I think we all have questions. <laughs> Uh, I'll start with with Douglas and work that way, and then we'll circle back on this side. Joe, my broken record question uh, is the inconsistency on this. Is it a use or what? Um, no guesses. Right. It's, it's neighborhood one place type. So the way that the ordinance um, treats the EV charging station yeah. is effectively like a gas station. Okay, so that commercial use would be inconsistent because the place type below it is and I cannot remember there. It's it's a wedge of N1 in between two different place types. A campus is above it and I can't believe or I can't remember what it is below it and it's good commercial. Yeah. And so then we're going to have like a wedge of N1 that may not be accessible there and I'm, I'm just I'm. I understand about gas station, blah, blah, blah. I'm good now, but the inconsistency, I just wanted to get that clear. Thank you. I will sit quietly now. Mr. Harvey. Yes, um, the question of um, um, just by having some conversation with the community that just the concerns of maybe this is more of a comment than a question, but I will ask, I'll try to put it in a question format is that this rezoning supports the one that's already approved the 20 2018 one right which is across the street if i'm not mistaken right again if i'm looking at the wrong one y'all correct me but 
-hmm. because it's just the it's just zero non three yeah mm -hmm. yeah it's just the it's just the ev and this is just for that and so i guess the concern that a lot of the neighbors have you know is that okay can appreciate that that is you know an environmentally friendly thing and all that kind of stuff but just kind of feel left out of discussion because it's it's technically to support you know new folks is moving into the area which they are fine with but it's like okay well are we going to go through this um to kind of rezone just for people to park their cars and charge their cars so i guess the question connecting it back to the question is that it, it does connect to this 083 one right it's completely independent of that and rezoning okay to my knowledge okay good I, I'll, I'll just note that there were the community meeting on this, there were two people. Um, you know, community meetings are hit or miss sometimes, but, um, you know, that just comes down to um, the message to the public that if you care about something, you need to show up at the community meeting. Mm -hmm. um, you know, I'm not preaching, but yeah, I am. <laughs> Your public service announcement is yeah. appreciated. <laughs> are you guys? Terry. Yeah, I do recall in the presentation that, that this was a supportive parcel for existing uses is what I recall from from there. Um, you know, for, for me, um, I'm challenged by this because, you know, it's been such a refreshing um, site over the past five, 10 years to see quarters of major thoroughfares and minor thoroughfares in our community um, go from four petroleum stations um, at, at each corner or one at each corner to, to one, two or three now. So we're seeing that that slow down. Um, we're also seeing petitions for gas stations and the air quality commission uh, lower. And it's, it's just difficult to have um, uh, a specific vehicle intense intensity here um, in this kind of out space. But um, uh, I just don't see how um, uh, another example of this in our community yet. Do you have another example of this type of facility in Charlotte or in North Carolina? I believe this is the first of its kind that we've um, had in the rezoning process. Okay, thank you. No, it's the first one I've seen proposed for our community. I've seen them in other communities, <clears throat> but not here. Just uh, Commissioner Lansdale. I, I don't know how many hotels there are next to this, mm. but I would believe that there would be a great deal of synergy between the hotels and these charging stations. I, I throw that out there. I could be totally wrong, but I, mm. I would think that that would be a valid uh, proposition there. And just like with keeping uses close to where the people are that need the use, I would say that it would be valid to say, those people are the most likely folks to have an electric car in that particular part of town that are the, the hotel's resident or guest. Yes. And I will say if, I, if we can just sort of chat through this for, if I may, um, it's proximity to the airport. It's going to be critical for rental car returns as well to hit that magic 75% charge rate for returns. So uh, appreciate that. And I would think you would be quite right on that one. <laughs> uh. Do you have one? No. Okay. Um, I mean, normally I would love to tell you I'm not voting for another gas station, but yeah, this one certainly runs a little bit different. Um, so I tried to look at a little, little bit more from just auto centric uses. Um, and it is close to the highway, close to the airport. To hear all of that structure, uh, infrastructure and everything. Um, I'm generally actually supportive of this, and I'm I I like to vote against a gas station. So on the other side, oh, on the other side, there's nothing but there's nothing but houses. There's a uh, any other discussion? This is for the. It used to be somebody's. Any place. other discussion for the record? Oh, sorry, doctor. <laughs> <laughs> I have a question. Just uh, observation. Um, I do um, like to see that we're moving towards having these cha charging stations here. Um, I, I don't don't necessarily like that we it's known as a gas station, 
I'll get over that. But um, I do like that it, it's it's very progressive uh, for the city to have these charging stations and particularly its location. Anyone like to make a, or any other discussion? In that case, I'll ask for a motion. All right, I'm going to take a chance here and um, we'll see if we'll see how it goes. Having reviewed the petition and considered the consistency statement prepared by staff to approve this petition, I move that we recommend approval of petition number 2022062 as it appears before us and the adoption of the consistency consistency statement. Second. We moved by Lansdale, seconded by Welton. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's our first unanimous 5 0 of the evening. Thank you, ladies and gentlemen. All right, up next, rezoning petition uh, at number eight on our agenda rezoning petition 2022 078 by Sarah Ventures LLC. And we're back to Joe. Joe, busy night. Would hurt. Well, you'll, you'll be down with me after this one. <laughs> <laughs> um, this is uh, approximately 7.41 acres located on the north side of West Trade Street near the intersection with Wells Meadow Drive. The current zoning is I-2. Proposed zoning is UR2CD and MUD CD. The 2040 policy map calls for innovation, innovation mixed use. And the proposal uh, would have two development areas, A and B. Development area A, which is the majority of the site um, there in kind of light purple color, uh, is to be zoned UR2CD and includes 116 single family attached residential dwelling units. Development area B is the existing building in the orange color and is proposed to be zoned MUD CD and made to be Redeveloped uh, with up to 12,000 square feet of gross floor area of general offices, medical offices, clinics, child care center, community recreational center, indoor recreation, EDE, E type one and two brewery, financial institution without an extra and without an accessory drive through window, showroom, retail, personal services, studios for artists, designers, and photographers, sculptors, potters, weavers and designers of ornamental or precious jewelry or up to 10 residential units. Um, any type 2 EDEE -E -E use uh, would have to serve food, could not solely serve alcoholic beverages. Um, commits to preserving the existing building in development area B while allowing for renovation. Women's building height in both development areas to 52 feet provides a 20 foot setback from future back of curb of West Trade Street, provides a 20 foot landscape yard along the northern property boundary, commits to implementing an eight foot planning strip and eight foot sidewalk along the site's West Trade Street frontage, provides a 50 foot greenway easement along Stewart Creek to Mecklenburg County for future, future greenway development, orients the front doors of units along West Trade Street to face the public street, and front doors of all other units to open space, internal courtyard, tree safe area, or Stewart Creek, and commits to providing a minimum of 2,000 square feet of open space in at least three of the following elements, walking paths, landscaping, seating areas, and structures appropriate within the proposed open space area. Since the public hearing, the petitioners addressed several outstanding issues related to site and building design and the environment. There remain two outstanding issues, uh, one regarding a tree within the right of way and another regarding. Um, I'm sorry, there were two. There were two outstanding issues following the public hearing. One being the tree inside uh, of the right of way, the other being uh, the tree save area that is located at the northern um, end of the site in plan view here. I understand that both of those have been worked out with urban forestry um, and a subsequent site plan will be submitted following zoning committee addressing those issues. Um, staff does recommend approval 
uh, once we receive that revised site plan that uh, confirms those changes that are acceptable to urban forestry. Um, be happy to answer your questions. Yes, the only outstanding seem to be urban forestry. That's that's something. <laughs> Terry, go right ahead. Just a couple confirmations here. Um, the the railroad or the property as it's presented, uh, Joe, on that one would be the towards the east. Um, that is the right of way for the railroad. Is that correct? Yes. There you go. Um, no, on that one it would be the north. Yeah. To the north. Yes. And the reason why I said is, do we have a potential of how the potential greenway connection easement will look, or is that just going to be part of the uh, tree save and until it's time? Do we have that information yet, or is that in the conversation? So I understand that there will be a direct connection um, between the a private street. Um, I believe it's it's towards the the green triangle. Mm -hmm. um, I believe there'll be a direct connection to the the greenway easement that is shown there in green uh, running north south. Great, thanks. Those are not uh, deal breakers for me, but um, this one is for CDOT. I don't see it indicated on the uh, site plan, but again, uh, ingress and egress questions will always be present with me, if not um, verbally, internally. Um, what type of driveway classifications are we looking at for West Trade Street? I know it's challenging with the existing oak and um, I, the way I checked what, on the site plan. It doesn't specify, but I do want to, you know, make it clear that the driveways and the specific types are usually worked out in permitting, so we don't get the specific driveway types with each rezoning. Uh, okay. Uh, well, thanks very much. That's my questions. Anyone else have questions? Uh, 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 the mic. Sorry, uh, Commissioner Harvey. Uh, question about just the um, the ability to access the space. So, are we saying that the only exits would be Yellowstone and Trade? Trade? And unless I'm mixing up locations, the only reason why I ask this is because if that's right before you get to the train track that runs behind this. That that traffic pattern is 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 crazy. So I I don't know if that's a CDOT question or not, but just wanted to confirm the the access street access. The um, the only access points are are onto West Trade Street shown in the the red arrows. Which that part of West Trade Street is to, well technically the end of West Trade before you get to freeway, but that runs directly into an in one residential neighborhood, right? If I'm looking at this correctly, you mean right? because street dumps into. Yeah, because that part of trade street goes directly into Smallwood, it goes, right? Yeah, correct. So, okay, so the, yeah, um, going towards the southeast on the on the plan, West trade street would cross Stewart Creek and then directly across the creek um, is an in one place type. Most of the properties immediately adjacent to the creek, and you can see it in the aerial there, are, um, they've been bought out by the county for flood purposes. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's those other two streets, they'll break and all those. Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Just have a quick comment. Um, I know during the public hearing, um, there was some concern as to whether the um, the neighborhood, the uh, the current neighbors were uh, in support or how did they feel about it. Um, I received support that that a part of the neighborhood was in favor of it, uh, which I thought was great on the petitioner's behalf to go back and make sure um, that they had the engagement of the neighbors um, because that wasn't none of us knew. And I think one of the council members asked about that. So. Um, so, yeah, just wanted to put that on the record. Good comment. Good comment. Anyone like to make a motion on this one? It's Commissioner Rose. I'll make a motion. Go right ahead. Having reviewed the petition and considered the consistency statement prepared by staff to approve this petition, I move that we recommend approval um, of petition number 2022-078 as it appears before us. It is 
<clears throat> and the adoption of the consistency statement as it appears before us. Commissioner Walton, I'll second. I believe moved by Rhodes, seconded by Walton. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That is unanimous 5 0 and passes. We go on to item number nine, rezoning petition 2022 080 by RD South Park LLC. John, get back in the game. <laughs> okay, uh, this is approximately 9.13 acres bound by the north side of Roxborough Road, west side of Colony Road, east side of Rexford Road, and south of Wickersham Road, just north of the South Park Mall. You can see that on the map that it's currently zoned R17 MF multifamily residential and they're proposing MUD O with five year vested rights. The 2040 policy map recommends neighborhood two place type for the site. Um, I won't go over every detail, but um, the proposal is for a mix of uh, commercial and residential uses. Uh, the commercial uses are primar primarily located in area A and ground floor of area B along the uh, Werner Street that's indicated in the center of the site. And then uh, you have multifamily in areas A and B with townhome style units in area C. Um, and I'll go over the heights in the next uh, slides. Um, they are uh, providing transportation and commitments, installing loop branding crosswalks at the intersection of Rexford and Roxborough, contributing $250,000 to the loop project, constructing two new private streets, uh, one being a Wooner style street uh, between areas A and B. And they are providing architectural standards related to ground floor uses along the Wooner, a minimum of 20,000 square feet of publicly accessible open spaces. Um, Detached lighting restrictions, primary building material limitations, ground floor lighting uh, and architectural treatments as well. Uh, they are proposing a, a number of optional provisions to support the proposed development. Uh, interim surface parking between the buildings and streets during construction phases up to four parking shares uh, on the site. And I think one or two of those would be on Rexford Road, but the others would be on the Winter Street. Uh, stormwater facilities within setbacks, uh, building heights exceeding 120 feet, uh, six foot sidewalks within some of the development areas for tree preservation purposes, uh, innovative street design again to allow that Winter uh, pedestrian style street, uh, and uh, defining the base of building master signage package and uh, not requiring recessed doors, but uh, specifying that those doors would not swing into the sidewalks. Next slide. So since the public hearing, they've made some changes to building heights, and I know this is kind of hard to read, so I will try my best to uh, point these out with my laser pointer and go through what's uh, been changed. So for, and I'll start with area C, there's no changes there. That's still 48 feet that we saw at the public hearing. And area B, this was 119 feet maximum. Uh, and then there was some areas that were dropped down to, I believe it was 60 feet at the northwest corner of the site. Uh, they are have lowered all of area B to 100 feet maximum, except for this area here, which steps down to uh, 80 feet. And then for area A, this area here closest to Rexford and the hotels and the future colony um, building, that would be, I think, 160 feet. 60 or 165 feet that portion of the building they increased the maximum height from 169 that you saw at the hearing um, with the max at the corner of 164 i believe it was yes 164 uh, that's now 179 with the max of 174 at that corner and the and the reason for increasing the height there is so that they were able to reduce heights along in other locations in the development areas. Um, so now there's a step down about midway into that building to 102 feet. That was previously broken up into a couple step downs um, that were 149 and 128 feet. So now that's a single step down to 102 for that entire area there in the middle of development area A. And then a third or second step down um, is proposed uh, at this gray line, uh, which is down to uh, 92 feet for the entire frontage of colony, holding at um, 85 feet that we saw at the corner 
uh, during the public hearing. So maximum 85 at the corner, but it's maximum 92 for the entire face because of topography and reasons. Um, and that is a maximum or sorry, a minimum of 30 feet of distance between the face of Colony Road into the building. So from that frontage of Colony, max, uh, minimum of 30 feet would that be a maximum of 92 feet. And then from there, another, I think let's say, would be another 120 feet from that point over, you would be at 102 feet. And then from there, it goes up to up to 179. So those are the changes that we have for the building heights. And next slide. These are a couple of renderings that they provided, uh, again, illustrating the the step ups to the maximum height of 179 over here and then get a little bit taller there and you drop down to 85 along the face of uh, or 92 sorry along the face of colony and then the top uh, drawing is just an illustration showing uh, the relationship between the proposed buildings or townhome units and the single family homes uh, that are on Wickersham Drive. Staff is recommending approval of the petition. Uh, there's uh, there was one uh, technical revision that we had to clarify the heights and building area and clarify some building heights and step downs in area B that's been done. So staff is recommending approval of the petition that's uh, consistent with the 2040 policy map recommendation for neighborhood two place type for area C inconsistent with the policy map recommendation for development areas A and B. And I'm not going to read through all the rationale, um, but uh, I'll take any questions if you have any. I think we've all spent some time reading it. I presume. <laughs> uh, thank you, John. And Douglas, I'll let you lead. Uh, John. Yes. Areas A and B are inconsistent. Please tell me why. So for area A and, and B, it's going to be related to building heights that are appropriate for uh, the neighborhood to place type. The neighborhood to place type says that buildings should be um, no more, usually no more than five stories. So uh, you've got some building areas that are going to be exceeding that. And then um, for area B, the there's areas that are greater than 100 feet that are close to single family residential. So we typically see those at the lower height. Um, how does bonus play into that inconsistency? Are you, I, I thought you were allowed to get some bonus party in there. You can bonus above what the what you would typically get as a maximum. Um, the and basically the bonus structure that's set up at least in the UDO would be you can't go above what the maximum is allowed. In this case, you know it's a it's a mud zoning district, and your maximum is 120. And they're asking for heights above 120, so that's what the buck the bonuses that they're providing are accounting for is going up to that 179 feet. Um, area B, does that apply? That same reasoning apply? Bonus structures wouldn't apply to area B because they're not exceeding the maximum height of 120 for mud. Max. Okay. So does that make it incons? Does that make it still be inconsistent then? If if the bonus if they can get a bonus and they're not going up to the maximum height of 120. They're going up to 100. Then I've, I've spent far too much time with this this policy map. I'm sorry, <laughs> uh, and and I just I'm just trying to get it understood for me going forward because it 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 would seem you know it's the orangey color, which says okay we can do these kinds of housing in the orangey color. And area B is a certain kind of housing in that development part, right? There's not, there's not, I, I, if, if there was a use in there, that would be great. It would make sense to me. It was inconsistent, but I'm, I'm not. Yeah, I'm not it, it totally it comes down primarily to building height and height transitions. So building height, you're allowed up to 100 in N2 through bonuses. In if you're in the N2C district, this would translate to N2B. So that would go. You know, you'd have to rezone to get to N2C, but if we were talking strictly from that structure, there's height transitions that are built in that would only allow it to be up to 65 feet in certain spots and we're at like 80 at the lowest in those areas. So we're still a little bit. Is that the 200 and 100 feet yeah. setbacks? Yep. Yep. That's your so it's really that 
minor area that that kind of puts us in. But a hundred foot tall multifamily building with ground floor retail is allowed in N2C. Okay. So like I said, that, I, I, yeah. So I, I mean, if we're getting down into the the fine elements of height transitions and whether that makes it consistent or inconsistent. But if if we're at a hundred feet and then those transitions are built in, then you could look at a project that could be done under N2C in that development area B. Now A is you know where we're getting a taller. Would, that's, yeah, yeah, yeah. that's activity center type heights in in that area. But a hundred foot tall with ground floor retail is acceptable in an N2C. As long as those height transitions are built into N one, which is where okay. we're a little bit out of whack with those, but not yeah. not that far off. So it's it's pretty close. The the and stop me if I'm too far in the weeds. The policy map doesn't say into A, B, or C. Yeah. It just says it just N2, says N2, right? Right. Yeah. So yeah. Again, I, I just I question that. And because we're in the weeds now, you've explained to me what the right. weeds are all about. Yeah, I can't see you through the weeds at the moment. So okay, we're all we're all in that. But it, it's similar to the question you had earlier about the the duplex project on Prosperity Church building yeah. form, and one building type duplexes design outcome, neighborhood two because it's basically planned multifamily. You need yeah. public streets. You need individual lots, et cetera. So that's starting to be kind of some of those differentiating factors of. But you're right. It doesn't say A, B, or C. If this, if some of those height transitions get kind of built back in, yeah, then you probably would be looking at something that's very close to, if not aligned with the neighborhood two for that B yeah. development area. I mean, I, I guess it all comes down to the fact that A, B, and C are in the UDO, right? But the policy doesn't know about A, B, and C. At, at this point, we've got some uh, more general. Yeah, there there is work being done to make those determinations because we've got to go through that process at some point. Okay. Uh, we're in the process of coming up with criteria to what trans, you know, what constitutes A, B, or C, or N one A through F. Okay. Uh, not quite there yet. This will, like I said earlier, we'll go to N two B. So that's where we would start. But you know, it's okay. this is it's. Development area B is much closer to a neighborhood two outcome now than it was a few weeks ago. Okay, I will wear a shirt that says "nerd" next time, so you all will be warm. <laughs> I, I was thinking was like I was thinking of like a ghillie suit to blend in with a little the case. weeds. That might work that would, with a big N. Think that that works. I digress. Does anyone else have a Thank question? You. <laughs> Thank you, staff. Terry, I would like to, I, I would like to hear your question now, Terry. Please, well, I have a cape, but I got my pins. <laughs> I come straight forward on this stuff. So I do have some questions and this, this project gave me um, less concern about the, some of the issues that were discussed uh, uh, with my counterpart earlier, but um, I need staff or someone to talk more specifically about the full movement intersection on Roxbury, Roxborough Road. And to help me understand that um, all public services and business will not be conducted on the public streets for this parcel. This full movement intersection on Roxborough Road um, is of great concern that there's not more specifications of its use, its design, um, and accommodations for impacts for the, the street. So if anybody wants to talk about that in any way, shape, or form, um, I hate that the, um, the changes in building height for the explanation uh, for the Roxborough Road facade covered over exactly that spot with arrows, but um, this is a, a great <laughs> concern to me uh, for this parcel and, and will probably impact um, my decision on this one. So is CDOT want to talk in a little bit about how a uncontrolled intersection, uh, full movement intersection is going to work here at this parcel? Um, I, I guess I have a question for your question. Are you asking in, in terms of um, just general movement, like right turn, left turns in out. Are you asking more in a concern for uh, if if it'll actually be functional? Yeah, that's a great question for a functional. I I see the situation on East Boulevard where we have a full movement intersection in a building that um, is a catastrophe <laughs> for pedestrian bicycle movement and traffic as well for ingress and egress. So I have. Concerns about 
the type of use that this will be. Um, we also have a building on Sharon Road um, where it has a similar feature like this where uh, all business and services are uh, performed on Sharon Road to service the building. I just want to be guaranteed that this is not going to be a serviceable entrance uh, for this building, uh, that all access for the building and service will not be happening on Roxborough Road uh, or on Colony Road. Um, so I just want to make, make that, if there's a clarification that you can guarantee that it's not going to be the case. I don't want to rely on code enforcement to prevent this from happening if we can take care of it now. Um, well, we'd have to work there. There isn't any uh, notes on their rezoning currently that suggests that they would limit where their uh, if that functioning for the access would be. Um, they they also have alternative accesses, so it could go on a different road. We'd have to work with the developer to sort that out and see if we can get them to add that as a note. Yeah, I think that's going to be important for me for. Gary, that's it could be something we ask directly of the petitioner if you would like. Um, I, I'm not sure if that's going to be. Does anybody else want to ask that have a need for a response from the petitioner on this? I I will just say that I talked to the petitioner because I I was going up Colony Road and it was uh, impeded by a FedEx truck, and I asked a similar question, and I was told that they would be able to service that. If you would like additional clarity, I think that that would be good for us all. Also, and I couldn't find it when I was looking real quickly here. I believe the petitioner said that the servicing would be allowed only in the mornings and that that you would not be able to service after a certain period of time, but it's in some of this material somewhere. But I think the petitioner might be better served. Uh, certainly, you know, answering that question. I agree. Okay, so we'd all if we got yeah. So I'd like to uh, make a motion to suspend the rules and ask the petitioner uh, the question of how the entrance on the Roxborough Road facade will be used. It's Commissioner Rose, I second. Can we include in that the servicing of the building as well? Sure, just so that we can get it all in and, and servicing of the building. Correct. Yes. Uh, properly moved <laughs> and seconded. All in favor, say aye. 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 If we could hear from, uh, I believe we get Jeff. Please introduce yourself and. For your detailed uh, question on that. Thank you very much. Thank you, Jeff. As I understand the question that comes off on the Roxborough and the full movement that comes off of Roxborough into the facility through the parking deck facilities. And that was one of the questions I think you had. There is anticipated that there will be service that will entrance there. Having said that, the internal storage that is contemplated internal to the deck will be very substantial. I don't think it's been fully designed, but I have talked to uh, the head of related here. The idea is that that, sort of, that service will come in at times that will be not off peak in a large measure and will also come into a deck that will have substantial storage. So there will not be the backing up that I think you're concerned about that would come across the setback and then into Roxborough there. In addition, they anticipate that there would be proper traffic would most likely be coming down Roxborough more from the uh, commercial side rather than what you were concerned about, which might be coming down Colony Road, for example. And we're very sensitive, as you've seen from some other examples, we have a right in, right out that's being installed on Colony to discourage, frankly, the traffic that would be coming from the colony road trying to get at your question about service and the access on colony so there would be the ability to come in off of Roxborough as well as to make a left at the traffic signal that we're going to be installing as part of the requirements a traffic signal will now be at Roxborough this Roxborough extension that will go through the colony development so there'll be an opportunity for safe left turn movements to be able to then go in the street that you see there at Rexford, and then go down the pedestrian street. A real important thing also, I'll, I'll just mention it because it relates to service. This street is incredibly innovative. It's, we've all been using this term, the lunar, uh, which I guess wish we had bagged that lexicon. But anyway, uh, the reality of it is that that street will have bollards for pedestrian access 
during this call at 10 30 11 o'clock on but we'll have those bollards down to ensure in the morning before activity occurs there will be opportunities for the service to come in so there'll be a variety of ways of servicing the community in that regard at the same time it will become a pedestrian street that we think will provide unique energy plus sort of a barcelona type uh, type of street with the type of inability to incur and encourage the pedestrian walking let's comment on your your concerns about infrastructure we are providing for a contribution to the loop trail the loop trail is currently planned to be on the other side of restroom from the site we want that loop trail because the walkability that comes with that loop trail is tremendous but having it on the other side of the site i think does alleviate some of your concerns also about bikes and the and the, the the difference between trucks coming in off of uh, Roxburgh and then onto Rexford because we will be turning on the other side of what we anticipate the loop design to be. As a long-winded response, I hope that responded to some of your concerns. Yeah, great support. Uh, if I may to start on this before I turn it back over to you guys for question, great support for all the other aspects. Is that ingress and egress for the? Um, for that particular spot on Roxborough that causes me the gross, the greatest consternation. You know, before we see um, accident rates, crash rates for pedestrians coming from that limited sight distance with that uh, limited setback, I think of 20, 20 feet at that point, just pull, people pulling in and out of that site on Roxborough Road is the most concerning piece of the transportation solution to the design on this. And I just want to make that clear that all the other pieces I'm in support of, Great job, great piece, less concerned with the building heights, but it is that full movement mid block in Roxborough that is a that is a challenge for me at this point, but I'll let others to, to go there. No question, but yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Jeff. Anyone else? Any other questions? Uh, I probably have one for John. Douglas, go ahead. John, what's the um I I'm haven't gotten to the site plan, but what's the actual setback off of Roxborough that's going to be required there? Give me just a minute and I'll. Yeah, I, I'm, I was trying to get to it too, if I could find it. Um, yeah, I think it's like either 20 or 22. 22 is the listed minimum on the plan. Yeah, okay. 22. Okay. Larger if we suppose it's close to the road. Activating the street, baby. Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, and, there, and there's variations in the building facade, so in places it will be further back, but that is the minimum. That sounds like modulation. Yes. <laughs> well, that's a good idea. We should include that. Oh, never mind. Uh, any other questions? Go right ahead, Courtney. You know, there's been a lot of conversation with uh, council about the city um, turning into a deal making city. Um, however, this is an example of how petitioners should have um, really come correct when they go into a neighborhood. Now, you're not going to get it 100% when you're going into a community, but it's imperative that you work with the community that's there. Um, the changes that the petitioner has made since the public hearing shows that they're listening to the community. They listen to the concerns that were brought up in the public hearing from council. Um, and I know that council is wanting us, it's going to hear this because they're weighing their decision very heavily on what we do and uh, relying on our expertise on this. But I think this is a prime example of, this is not a deal making, this is it's called compromise. And it's also called understanding your neighborhood and not um, penetrating your neighborhood like uh, in, a, in, a, in an aggressive manner, but making sure that you work with, with the, the community that's there um, as best as you can, um, and also understanding that they are running a business. And so we have to weigh that in addition to them going into the neighborhood. And so I think this is a really good example of how you can do both. You can go into the neighborhood, you, you're not, they're not knocking it out 100% with the neighbors, um, but they are, they are they're doing their best, the best that they can. Uh, in addition, they're losing some aspects of the business portions that they have of not having the office. Uh, which I think was a huge compromise uh, from a revenue standpoint. So I just wanted to go on a record to say, I think this is an excellent example of not deal making, but compromise. Thank you for those comments. And did you have something else? Okay. Let me make one comment. Um, 
I know council asked for clear guidance and why policy map might be something that needs to be part of this process is always changing the policy map. Almost every time we vote on anything, we are changing the policy map. That is the purpose of this process. With that said, the policy map was a rather blunt tool. And specifically when we're talking about acreage as large as this, that is all zoned one thing, it does not seem to leave room for transitions built into it if we only look at it with a very fine line. So that this petitioner took the time and the effort to develop a transition internal to their property that they're developing, I think is exactly the intention when we would put these make these place types next to less dense place types. This is the purpose of this type of place, this place type. Too many places. But, um, I do hold out that this might be one of the examples we point to how this process needs to work. Um, uh, the tallest part of this structure is over 500 feet away from private uh, single, I mean, lower N1 properties. Um, and I think if we were able to do that throughout the city, there's a whole lot of neighbors that would feel a lot more comfortable with some of the development that might be happening around them. But I'm open to a motion. This is Commissioner Walton. I will make a motion. Having reviewed the petition and considered the consistency statement prepared by staff to approve the petition, I move that we recommend approval of petition number 2022-080 as it appears before us and the adoption of the consistency statement as it appears before us. It's Commissioner Rhodes, second. Properly moved by Walton, seconded by Rhodes. All in, any further discussion? Sorry, I realized I might've cut someone off. All in favor say aye. Aye. And opposed? No. Uh, and again, uh, I'll state the opposition vote is that um, I have concerns over safety for the egress and ingress of the full movement intersection on Roxborough Road. And would love to see compromises continue to be associated with how that entrance and full movement intersection uh, will function in the future. Thanks. Very well. Excellent. Moving on to item number 10 on our agenda tonight, rezoning petition 2022-086 by P. Dan Holdings, LLC. And we're with Dave, I imagine. All right, 2022086. Uh, it's just less than two and a half acres uh, on Johnson Ailer. Uh, it's right uh, just south of uh, I 485. Uh, the current zoning is R3, and the proposed zoning is R8 multifamily conditional. Uh, the adopted place type is for neighborhood one. And the proposal uh, that was presented at a hearing was for up to 19 uh, residential units and mix of quadruplexes and duplexes. Uh, no more than uh, five units per building, limit building height to 40 feet. Uh, there is an existing barn on the property in the back corner there that's uh, proposed to remain. Uh, does propose a 20 foot wide internal drive connection to Johnson Aylor Road, as well as connecting to an existing uh, driveway access to the east. Does identify a six foot sidewalk and eight foot planting strip along the road frontage. Also an existing bike lane along Johnson Aylor Road, as well as a turn lane, uh, has architectural standards built into the petition, as well as a minimum buffer along Interstate uh, 485. Uh, staff does recommend approval of the petition. We do have uh, one outstanding item or two outstanding items related to environment and site building design. I believe those are uh, being worked on and, and should be resolved here uh, prior to any decision. Uh, nothing that gives us uh, significant concerns at this point, just some things we need to clean up on the plan. It is consistent with the neighborhood one policy, or excuse me, neighborhood one place type on the policy map. Uh, but staff does recommend approval and does, does feel that it's a uh, reasonable request in this location, given some of the development pattern along Johnston Ailer and some of the existing neighborhood two uh, just to the uh, southwest of, of this property. So with that, we'll take any questions you might have. Committee, looks like Welton, before you eat your sandwich, could you? Yeah. 
They, the inconsistency is related to the building type. Am I correct in this one? Yeah. Okay. Building type. Building uh, form, I guess. Building, yeah, it's more the, the site design. We'll just say the site because it's developed now or laid out now as more of a planned multifamily. If they were on individual lots, you know, then we're starting to get into okay. things that would be neighborhood one. So. Okay. All right. Light bulbs just going off in my head like you can't imagine. Do a brighter day. Does anyone else have questions? Uh, how about a motion? Commissioner Walton, I will make a motion. Having reviewed the petition and considered the consistency statement prepared by staff to approve this petition, I move that we recommend approval of petition number 2022-086 as it appears before us and adoption of the consistency statement as it appears before us. Commissioner Rhodes, second. Properly moved by Welton, seconded by Rhodes. All in favor, say aye. 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 And opposed? That passes unanimous at a 5-0. Moving on to item number 11, rezoning petition 2022-093 by ZCMB1 LLC. John. <laughs> Uh, approximately 1.56 acres on the north side of Gondola Avenue, uh, west, e sorry, east of West Sugar Creek Road and north of Cinderella Road. It is currently zoned R4 single family residential and they're proposing UR1 urban residential conditional. The 2040 policy map uh, calls for a neighborhood one place type here. It allows for up to 14 lots. Uh, along the extension of gondola uh, and 14 duplex units or single family attached dwellings. Uh, we can go on to the uh, next slide, Emma. Um, oh, do we have a changes slide for that one? Yeah, it's working the presentation. Oh, okay. Uh, oh, well, so, so since the public hearing, they have uh, added some commitments for um, the neighborhood. Let me pull that up. I'm sorry. Um, oh, thanks. Uh, so they're contributing $5,000 to the Hidden Valley Community Association and contributing $10,000 to CDOT towards a future traffic signal at the inter intersection of Cinderella and West Sugar Creek Road. All right. Go over. Staff is recommended approval of the petition. There's not any outstanding issues and it's consistent with the 2040 policy map recommendation for the neighborhood one place type. Take any questions? We have Douglas with one. Go ahead. John, can you explain to me about the turnaround that appears on the site plan that looks like it goes into the middle of the building? Yeah, uh, it's a lot too. Yeah, so you can't. Mm -hmm. There's there's fine print that go goes along with that. That but basically that's a temporary turnaround that would be constructed until such a point that Gondola Avenue gets extended out to um, the other road. I think that's Sugar uh, Creek? West Sugar Creek, right? Yeah. Um, so right now there's a there's a business own, owner property that's in between this site and West Sugar Creek and it would have to cross them. So uh, until that redevelops or the street is extended, this would end here. And in order to provide a place for you know, Garbage, recycle, fire truck, et cetera, to turn around. There'll have to be a turnaround put there. And until that is extended and that turnaround goes away, there would be no unit constructed there. So there no that unit oh, be, that okay. unit won't exist until the turnaround happens. I gets thought to maybe go that and, was just gonna be the cheap unit. Yeah. yeah. Uh, <laughs> um it can this may be a CDOT question, because I'm I'm thinking that's like yeah, sixty hundred feet road between the gondola extension and the nub that comes oh, off of yeah, totally. is is that something that is in the process or is it waiting for somebody to rezone something and be forced to do i'll defer to see that i'm not sure yeah. exactly what they have in mind yeah i mean i'm sorry go ahead 
No, I, I just I'm, I was just curious because you know it looks like you could throw a rock from this gondola extension to the the gondola nub. I'm not sure if that's a technical term, but we can go with that. <laughs> um, so I just was wondering, is, were there plans to denubify this whole adventure? Uh, CDOT had a request of them to extend that road and make that connection, uh, but we don't have any city plans that I'm aware of to extend that road via a CIP <laughs> project or otherwise. Okay. Thank you. And, and I guess while you're there, the gondola road extension will be built up to our current standard and everything, right? As a street, not just as a driveway. Right. Yeah, that's a public street. Yep. Thank you. And I'll note too that since they don't have the ability to basically get, you know, the ability to construct the street through the neighbor's property. Uh, they have put a note that they would uh, work with those neighbors to construct a sidewalk uh, connection in the in the meantime. I did see that. <clears throat> Thank you, Harvey. And then, oh no, Terry, let's talk. Yeah, appreciate all the accommodations made here. <clears throat> I just kind of have a general question regarding the the monetary support for the stoplight at Cinderella. In Sugar Creek, um, can you talk a little bit about how that rationale and how that's going to be impactful to this this parcel, and maybe what are the plans for Cinderella Stoplight? Drew, do you want to take this one? Uh, yeah, there were concerns from the Hidden Valley community about. Uh, it's hard to take a left or right out of Cinderella onto Sugar Creek during the peaks. Um, and that's kind of where the, the discussion for a traffic signal at Cinderella came from. But at this point in time, we, there's currently a pedestrian hybrid beacon designed for the intersection south of Cinderella. Um, so that, that, that fun, the contribution could in theory go towards that PHB or potentially another full movement signal in the future when the volumes warrant it. Okay, so when the volumes warrant it, that's that was a, a key phrase for me. So thanks very much for that. Anyone else? I think everyone knows what I'll ask next. Anyone want to make a motion? This is Lansdale. Having reviewed the petition and considered the consistency statement prepared by staff to approve this petition, I move that we recommend approval of petition number 2022093 as it appears before us and uh, the adoption of the consistency statement as, as it appears before us. Harvey, second. Properly <clears throat> moved by Lansdale, seconded by Harvey. All in favor say aye. 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 And opposed? That's a unanimous 5-0. And we'll move right on to item number 12, rezoning petition 2022-106 by Drakeford Communities. Michael. Thanks. <clears throat> this is a approximately 0 0.50 acres located on the southeast intersection of Renard Street and Fairmont Street, which is east of Beatty's Ford Road and north of Oaklawn Avenue. Um, the current zoning is R5, single family residential. The proposed zoning is UR2 CD. The 2040 policy map calls for a neighborhood one. Uh, so with this proposal, they, uh, they will allow a maximum of uh, six single family attached dwelling units or four single family dwelling units. Um, they provide an eight foot planning strip and an eight foot sidewalk along both Renard Street and Fairmont Street. They dedicate all the necessary right of way in fee simple commands to the city, and they do provide architectural standards, uh, including building materials. Um, the petition is consistent with the 2040 policy map. Um, there were a few minor outstanding issues which have been resolved, uh, and staff does recommend approval. Thank you. Thank you. Douglas, shall I ask why it's inconsistent? 
Oh, well, your mouth is full? No, it's, it's okay. consistent. Oh, it is consistent. You're right. These ones, this one, they've, Sorry. Just, they've taken my impetus for living away from me. Okay. Understand. <laughs> All right. In all seriousness, I just don't have any questions. One, one quick question from Lance. Now, um, is, is there going to be any uh, plans for on street parking for CDOT? This is for CDOT on Renner Street or Fairmont. Is that is that an opportunity there or not an opportunity in the future? Uh, there currently are plans. I believe this is a U02, which doesn't accommodate for on street parking. If that roadway was to be widened via um development and it was upgraded to u03 for a wider street section then all street parking could be fit onto the roadway uh however there aren't any current plans to widen this roadway thank you um and I, 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 and i believe i saw this and this includes sidewalks and everything upgrade right i believe i saw that i just realized it was a Landfill question that I had. Along both Renard Street and Fairmont Street. Excellent. Uh, I'll entertain a motion if anyone is uh, so moved, so to speak. Sure. Having reviewed the petition and considered the consistency statement prepared by staff to approve this petition, I move that we recommend the approval of petition number 2022106. It appears before us. And the adoption of the of the consistency statement as it appears before us. Harvey second. Properly moved by Lansdale, seconded by Harvey. All in favor say aye. 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 And opposed. And that passes 5-0 unanimous. Congratulations, Mr. Drake. And moving on to 13, rezoning petition 2022-117 by Mungo Holmes. The funnest name of the night. And Holly. Thank you. This site is a little over nine acres along the northeast side of Old Plank Road, just east of Berkshire Boulevard and west of Harlan Street. There you can see, oh, sorry, if we could just go back one more slide, I'm just going to point out that the site just to the south of this is actually under development in a kind of somewhat consistent development form. So I just wanted to note that that is ongoing development. It was rezoned a couple of years ago. Okay, now we can move on. The existing zoning is R3 LWPA, so single family residential, like widely protected area, and they are proposing to go to R8 multifamily conditional, still under that uh, like widely protected area. The 2040 policy map recommends neighborhood one, and I'll go ahead and say it's inconsistent. And the reason it's inconsistent is that it could allow for um, up to five units per building. Um, anything past four would be inconsistent within one number of other things but just want to put that out there i'm sorry what okay. fewer notes for me to write down later <laughs> all right we can go on thank you so the proposal itself is for up to 54 townhome units which i believe is a little under six dwelling units per acre and no more than 14 principal structures no more than four of the buildings can have up to those five units per building Commits to 400 square feet of private open space per sublot. Common open space may also be provided. There is access into the site from Old Plank Road, and will also it will also complete a connection with Sedell Lane, which currently stubs off. It commits to install five foot bike lane along Old Plank Road, and will also construct eight foot planning structure and a six foot sidewalk along all public streets. There will be two car garages in every unit, and it has a pretty ample. 50 foot class C buffer along all of the property's boundaries with existing residential development. Um, this buffer can be reduced by up to 25% with the installation of a fence. Um, and then it provides a number of architectural details. So there have been some substantial changes since the public hearing. Um, and I'll go ahead and note those. And a lot of them are in response to the opposition that we heard at the public hearing. So they mentioned um, some concern over stormwater. So they provided some additional stormwater notes that go well above and beyond what we would typically see in a rezoning. So we have those in there now, addressed all technical revisions. They also have um, 
for sorry, another stormwater note in the public hearing, it was discussed the stormwater management facility that I believe is guests along the western side of the site. They have now combined with the other stormwater management facility, moving it away from that property boundary as discussed during the public hearing. They have also committed to adding a lot more fencing along that class C buffer, also in response to the public hearing opposition. So, um, Good changes made since the public hearing. There's only one outstanding issue and that's was a new outstanding issue added to the site plan with this latest submittal and it's just to utilize the existing streets along the old plank road frontage as a buffer and they have already said that they will add that change in. So we will have no outstanding issues. Um, it seems like going into decision and they have committed to all those changes. Staff does recommend approval of this petition. Um, as I said, they have resolved all of the outstanding issues and we'll have that update coming soon. I'll be happy to take any questions. Connectivity and plenty stormwater retention. That's that's a win, right? No, I'm kidding. <laughs> uh, I was happy to see utilization of one of our stub roads. I'm, it always makes me feel better when we, even if we end up putting in a cold, seeing a, a new cul-de-sac enter our city, at least there's connectivity throughout in other parts of this particular development. Uh, anyone have any questions? Terry. This is for CDOT and it's not really directly related to this particular zoning, but um, you guys confirmed to me a couple of months ago that Old Plank Road was not a truck route, which was uh, obvious for me. Um, but as we were looking at parcel after parcel and Old Plank Road changed the fabric of Old Plank Road, do we have any indication or prioritization for Old Plank Road improvement as a as a project as a whole? between Brookshire and I can't remember the, the connector name at this point, but um, that, that section of road used to be a beautiful windy um, tree line, thank you, Oakdale uh, to Oakdale, uh, tree line road that was a wonderful road to ride our bike on and to kind of get uh, uh, through as a through cycle from uh, Brookshire into town. Um, it's not that way and it's not going to be that way without consideration from staff and prioritization for Old Plank Road uh, to be looked at as a whole. So lots of comments there, but um, with the amount of zonings and the amount of changes in traffic and, and uh, uh, VMTs, um, I think there's going to be some, some need for prioritization in the, uh, in the CRTPO project list as well. So more of a comment, but um, just want to say thank you for the consideration. Thank you, Commissioner Lansdell. Any other comments? Questions? It's it's yours if you want it, Commissioner Reds. I'll make a motion. <clears throat> Have a review of the petition and consider the consistency statement prepared by staff to approve this petition. I move that we recommend appro uh, approval of petition number 2022-117 as it appears before us and the adoption of the consistency statement as it appears before us. Harvey second. Properly moved by Commissioner Rhodes, seconded by Harvey. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? And that's unanimous, 5-0. Moving on to item number 14, rezoning petition 2022-128 by Kinger Homes, LLC. Holly, back to you. Thank you. This site is a little over two acres located along the west side of Mallard Creek Road, south of Silver Birch Drive and west of Taylor, David Taylor Drive. The current zoning is R3 and the proposed zoning is R8 multifamily conditional. As you can see, it's, it's not adjacent aside from its proximity across from Mallard Creek Road to any existing single family residential zoning. So I just wanted to note that here. The 2040 policy map calls for neighborhood one. Um, again, it has adjacency to neighborhood two. That's reflective of the townhome development just adjacent to it. And then north of it is a daycare. The proposal itself is for up to 16 townhome units with no more than five units per building. Um, again, the five units is what makes it inconsistent with neighborhood one. It also is not on sublots, so that's part of that consistency. <laughs> 
It provides a 30 foot setback along Mallard Creek Road and 40 foot rear yard and 20 foot side yards. So it has ample buffering between these uses, even though it's not directly adjacent to any single family residential uses. It dedicates minimum of 50% of the site to open space, 15% of the site to tree save, provides access to the site from Mallard Creek Road. It will have internal private drives for the individual unit access. It will also commit to a 12 foot multi use path and 8 foot planting strip along Mallard Creek Road and 5 foot sidewalks along those internal private drives. And then it provides a number of architectural details and lighting fixtures to be fully capped and shielded. Since the public hearing, there have been a couple of notable changes to the site plan. They updated um, the tree safe area to be a minimum of 30 feet in response to an urban forestry outstanding issue. Uh, they also address the outstanding issues from CDOT by committing to extend that 12 foot multi use path down to Summer Croft Lane, which is the entrance to that townhome development that's next to the site. And they have also a, just a a couple other items that I wanted to note here. The driveway has been pushed up. I don't, I don't think we got a picture of the latest site plan or no, it is. Sorry, I just can't see it well from here. Thank you. So the driveway has been pushed a little north and it has made what was formerly identified as a quadplex to a triplex and put that unit into the building next to it. So that other building now has five units and that's in response to a CDOT outstanding issue to move that driveway a little north. It does have one out, more outstanding issue that will be addressed that they've already committed to, and that's to uh, construct an ADA, add, add a note to the site plan that they will construct an ADA compliant bus stop. And then there's just one remaining small technical revision that they've also already committed to, and that's cleaning up the language on one of the transportation notes. Staff does recommend approval. Like I said, we're in good shape in terms of the outstanding issues. Um, no further problems from us. It meets a lot of the items that we would look for in terms of going from N1 to N2. And I'll be happy to take any questions. All right, and Douglas. Just to follow up on, obviously you guys have noticed I'm, I'm on the N2 or the, the inconsistency train tonight. That's fine, I know this. I am concerned that do our council members who will be making these votes, have they asked these questions and has this information gotten to them and does it get to them in the current form? Um, because I can understand, you know, oh, it's the building form, but I'm choosing my words carefully here. Does our council know that building form matters from N1 to N2? And there's not really a question in here. I'm just saying that I, I, I asked this question because I want to make sure that council gets the point uh, because I think that they, they may need that too. Um, and I, I, enough said, I guess. Yeah, I'll let Dave speak to that since he's the one that they council. Yeah, I, I think we're just continually looking for ways to provide good information. Thank you, Dave. That is extremely well put. <laughs> And our rationale does include some basic information about the place types, but there's always room for improvement. Of course, I don't think I specifically noted in the rationale, for example, you know, this isn't on sublots and it has more than four units per building. That's not permissible in N1. So that's yeah. not something I put in the rationale, but yeah, always yeah. looking for yeah. ways to improve. Yeah, I mean, I, again, many of our council members may be able to grasp that and not have not a problem. Um, I said many. And Mr. Lansdale. No questions, just a comment. Again, I want to talk a little bit about the petition that we'd love to see these things happen sooner than later, but as long as they happen, we're going to be happy. But uh, the, the changes for the transportation for Summercroft, um, the importance of having a variety of mobility choices designed into the parcel and the zoning, is critical. Um, I'll keep banging my head on the door until the door breaks or my head breaks, but um, uh, I'm sure it'll it'll continue to change. But it's such a critical. This parcel could be talked about. It's, it's criticality for this. This proximity to Mallard Creek Greenway, the school. I just I just think there's an opportunity here that um, and a great example for petitioners to to do this first 
and it would make the streamlining of the process a lot easier as we move forward, especially when we talk about transportation issues and transportation choices. So thank you. Uh, I need to finish by saying I'll be supporting it because of that. I was going to point out that was a compliment for the petitioner. I wanted to make sure that was hers. Yeah. <laughs> thank you, Commissioner. Rhodes? No, um, no question, but just a comment. I totally agree with uh, Commissioner uh, about this one. Uh, I always have very um, huge apprehension about anything on Mallet Creek. Uh, I think I've <laughs> any anything on Mallet Creek. I, um, just because I, I live in that neighborhood, um, and I used to run that uh, that street a lot, like probably three times a week, um, and encountered um, ladies that were hit by cars uh, during that time. So. I'm always, I, I am with the commissioner. I am not um, the the traffic connoisseur um, to Commissioner Terry's point, like to, to <laughs> Commissioner Terry's point, but to this particular uh, street, I totally agree. Please come with all transportation uh, as well as street, you know, figured out if you're doing anything on Mallet Creek so that we are not, we're not in the gray. Uh, we're, I think everyone is, is very well aware that Mallet Creek as is, is very dense. So we need that. That's very important to have that information. So that's just for the petitioner as well as future petitioners on Mallet Creek. Rose, would you like to make a motion? With that being said, I'll make a motion. Uh, having reviewed the petition and considered the consistency statement prepared by staff to approve this petition, I move that we recommend approval of petition number 2022-128 as it appears before us and the adoption of the consistency statement as it appears before us. Lansdale second. Thank you. Properly moved by Rhodes, seconded by Lansdale. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes 5-0. And bringing us to item number 15, rezoning petition 2022-132 by Fall Line Development, Max. Thank you. Um, this is petition 2022-132 is located at the southeast corner of IBM Drive and University Point Boulevard, west of I-85 and approximately 17.95 acres in size. The site is currently undeveloped. The current zoning is RE2 Research District and it's a conventional zoning district. The proposed zoning is R17 MFCD. Uh, multifamily residential and that is a conditional district the proposed rezoning continues the trend towards multifamily um, from research zoning set by properties to the north of the site along i-85 um, south of wt harris boulevard 2040 policy map calls for the community activity center place type for this site uh, some of the other place types adjacent are campus place types to the north, east, and south, and uh, additional community activity center to the east across I-85. The R-17 MFCD district is consistent with the act community, current community activity center place type. Proposal calls for up to 260 multifamily units and approximately 14.5 dwelling units per acre. Two ve vehicular access points are proposed as generally depicted on the site plan via IBM Drive and University Pool. Uh, University Point Boulevard, 12-foot multi-use path on an 8-foot playing strip will be constructed along IBM Drive. Architectural design standards are proposed relating to exterior building materials, roof pitches, horizontal and vertical facade articulation and modulation, limitation of blank wall areas, screening predominant building entrances, and direct pedestrian access to public streets. Also, pedestrian scale lighting and site lighting uh, standards would protect adjacent properties and rights of way from excess glare. Maximum building height would be 80 feet, which is consistent with the place type. Uh, would prohibit parking between the building and the street. Would dedicate a 60 foot easement to Mecklenburg County Park and Rec to continue the Dobie Creek Greenway alignment through the site, consistent with earlier petitions to the north. Uh, would provide a minimum 4,500 square feet plaza slash amenity space, as generally depicted on the site plan. Staff recommends that the approval of this petition upon resolution of just a couple minor issues um, dealing with the wording. Uh, of some notes on the site plan related to transportation. I'm happy to take any questions at this time. Fixing notes, got it. Any questions? What are some of the issues with transportation that we're still working through? Uh, there are two transport, if my computer doesn't die, there are two um, notes. One deals with the stacking of the proposed left turn lane and the other deals with um, just the wording uh of one of the notes uh about the uh, uh, 
It says, unless otherwise stated, the petitioner shall ensure all transportation improvements are substantially completed prior to the issuance of the site plan building, uh, first building certificate of occupancy. And I believe CDOT is taking issue with the term unless stated otherwise herein. Great. Thanks for the clarification. Um, I do have a non-transportation question <laughs> uh, on this parcel, um, and it deals with the swim buffer. And I know, I know we really want to do these infill projects, these these pieces there, but is there any concern that we have any pushback with the gradients for the swim bu buffer along University Point Boulevard? I mean, that's a pretty steep drop off, right? Um, I guess I'm just trying to figure out how how that how that's going to be managed or would are they just uh, is the petitioner just going to be able to give up that area um you know to to duke energy and and them for that particular piece or is is that just a, just trying to understand that visually so uh i believe there's a duke energy right of way located on the property they're also dedicating an easement which would be most likely mostly within the buffer to mecklenburg county park and rec um none of the building area or parking area is proposed within the swim buffer i don't believe um just yeah I, that was just wanted to confirm that so it wasn't a trick question <laughs> yeah so i i'm not an engineer so i'll, I'll <laughs> defer to stormwater uh during the land development process sure thank you but the transmission lines go right over the parking, parking lot. Mm -hmm. It's my it's my understanding that um, parking is fine uh, with Duke generally. Um, uh, that will have to be confirmed with them uh, through some of their processes outside of outside of our processes. Yeah. <laughs> they're they're. <laughs> Wireless charging for EV. So, that's like 150 feet drop off, though, in that parking lot. I mean, that's a. That'd probably be a lot of retaining walls, but I, I guess they're not to that point of um, engineering in the drawing yet. Yeah, that yeah. was the topo. That was my that was my red flag on that one. So I just didn't understand it. But yeah, thank you. Any other questions? Thank you everyone for sticking with us, by the way. Uh, we'll try and wrap this up shortly. Any other questions? Motions? Are, they, are you about to ask a question? Uh, 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 <laughs> having reviewed the petition and considered the consistency statement prepared for prepared by staff to approve this petition, I move that we recommend approval of petition number 20221322. As it appears before us, and the adoption of consistency statement as it appears before us. Harvey second. Properly moved by Lansdale, seconded by Harvey. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That passes 5 0. So we will move on to item number 6. Parking lot. <laughs> item number 16. We're not planning the parking lots for them, you know. Um, Presenting petition number 2022-142 by EC Legacy Properties, LLC. And we're back with Dave, I believe. All right, yeah, 2022-142. It's 1.57 acres on Albemarle Road and Mallard Drive. It is currently zoned R3, and they're proposing UR2 conditional. And the adopted policy map shows neighborhood one for this location. The proposal is for up to 32 uh, multifamily units in a single building uh, that would also have age restrictions on it for residents being 55 and over. Uh, does limit resident occupancy to those defined as low income by the U.S. Department of Housing and Urban Development. Uh, allows residents to live in their units for an undefined and continuous length of time. Does maxim, or cap building height at a maximum of 60 feet. Uh, ingress and egress would be from Mallard Drive, so no access onto Albemarle directly. Uh, does illustrate a potential security gate at the entrance and a potential gate where internal sidewalks would connect to the sidewalk along both Albemarle and Mallard. Uh, does illustrate a 12 foot multi use path, an 8 foot planting strip along Albemarle Road, and then a 6 foot sidewalk and 8 foot planting strip along Mallard Drive. Does propose a 16 foot Class C buffer along property lines abutting single family residential. Uh, illustrates a possible fence around the perimeter of the property and does note some passive recreation proposed uh, through the use of some interconnected sidewalks, some benches, 
uh, along the pond as well uh, for residents. Uh, no significant changes. They addressed all outstanding issues with the exception of just two items uh, that we uh, had at, at the public hearing. One of those is working with them on the location of the fence uh, that's internal to the site. Uh, they're proposing that it's uh, in front of some of the landscaping and, and we just want to make sure we clarify the location and that it's opaque, which they have, have provided that info. The other is just on building height. Staff was concerned with 50 feet. I think looking at it, the pitched roof is really what com comprises the additional height getting up to 60. So that would be just at the peak of roof. So it's not like we're going 60 feet plus. Uh, roof pitch, so we may end up rescinding that comment after some internal discussions, but uh, they did address most of the issues that had us concerned at the hearing. So we are recommending approval just to have those couple items just to get some clarification on. Uh, but with that, we'll take any questions you may have. So the height comment is. Pending kind of resolution for if it is just the peak that's at the 60. The way it's drawn on the plans, it's just the peak. So we might want to get uh, just some additional clarification. I talked to some of the folks uh, involved with the project today about it. Uh, that gives me a little bit less concern than okay. 50 feet plus or 60 feet plus, uh, you know, anything on, on the rooftop. So if it's just measured to the peak, maybe we get a, a clarification on that point in the notes. Uh, and that should be, which, you know, having a, Pitched roof may be a little bit more contextually appropriate there than just a, a flat, you know, roof from a typical multifamily building. So, you know, trying to think through, you know, what the context yeah. uh, would be better off with. So, that's one that we may end up at the end of the day just just withdrawing our our request on. Or so, uh, I, I would encourage that they moderate what they can. But yeah, I think that's where staff is as well. Yeah, but not to jump in front of that. Uh, any questions? Any other? Yeah, quick one. Harry, go ahead. Dave, um, what's up with the fence, man? Um, I'm not sure where it's going to be. I mean, it, the indication for the for the um, for the one presentation, it looks like the proposed opaque screening fence. Um, you know. Do you have any any further comments or suggestions about that? So it, right now it's shown being proposed around the entirety of of the site, uh, and it's proposed to be an opaque fence along the property line to the north with single family residential, as well as uh, to the east uh, with some of the single family that's that's next to it on Albemarle. It looks like it would be the same along. Uh, Albemarle, we've asked that that be put behind the, the trees that are being planted. Yeah, uh, and that's that was our request that they flip that. I think they're they're receptive to that. Uh, they did confirm there would be opaque, so it does provide that visual screen. Uh, but we did ask for it to just be behind those street trees because I don't think because of the road type and it being NCDOT, they'd be along Albemarle. So those would kind of be our street trees. So we want to get some, you know, some visual uh, out of those along that road front. So we did ask them to, to kind of flip some of that. I do understand they need some of that fencing, just given the, that it'd be an age restricted. So they want to make sure that that residents there are safe. And if, you know, one happens to maybe kind of walk around the site and think they, yeah, sure. so they, there's some safety issues with, with that as, as we're all probably aware of, uh, but yeah, the location of it, we've asked them to move it behind those trees, at least along Albemarle and Mallard. We're not as concerned about it on the north side uh, or the, the eastern side there where it says tree safe, but along Mallard and Albemarle, it should be behind those, those trees. Great. And I appreciate this. I, I spent some time on this one uh, thinking about this particular one because of its dy dynamic use potential. But um, the the front, would you consider the front of the parcel to be the Albemarle Road? I guess I that would affect the fence height, correct? Yeah, I think that's how they've, that we, we've been looking at at the frontage would be, even though access is off Mallard, the, the front faces Albemarle. Uh, and I think that would, I think they're proposing a single height around the entirety of the site. Is that correct? I, I, this is, that was my, that was going to be my, my question about, is, is it going to change does the, the fence height? Is it going to be different on the Mallard Drive versus the Albemarle side? And it maybe. I don't believe so. I'm I'm trying to take a look to see if there's anything on that now. Let's see. So as you're looking through that, as a, as a comment I'll make is that um, yeah, this 
particular parcel would set a, a standard for CDOT along Albemarle Road about how we have a continuation of the linear facility for the multi-use path on that side. So it's a good opportunity to um, to kind of set the standard at least at, at least at this point to to move forward with how um, we we look at Albemarle Road for anything else other than just moving cars down Albemarle Road. That give you enough time, Dave? Yeah, I don't see a, a height. Typically, there's six, potentially eight. That's usually the max, but we usually see six. We'll get clarification when we also get that final uh, outcome on having that relocated on the inside uh, of those trees. Sure. Uh, even if it, you know, might meander a little bit, there's, you know, at least some some visualization of of getting those street trees at least out in front of that fence so uh but yeah we'll also clarify the height but i, I would imagine it's probably no more than than a six foot fence at eight would be the max and uh, uh, one last follow-up if i may is do we know the material for the fence is it just i don't i didn't read in, read well enough to figure that out and I'm, i apologize for that it's not spelled out in the in the plans itself they do mention that uh it would be opaque, so it would have to be some material that meets that definition for our ordinance. Uh, but it is just proposed as an opaque fence. I don't think there's any, if it would be a just a wood privacy fence or a vinyl privacy fence, they didn't specify, but it would have to at least be some form of an opaque fence. Could, could we uh, make a request of material types for that fence, or is that beyond our scope? I, I mean, I think it's perfectly feasible to have some suggestion that, you know, as they continue to finalize the fence, that materials that would be appropriate from the zoning committee's perspective. That's that's certainly within y'all's. Love purview. to have some yeah. more details about that. So thank you. Yep. There you go. Uh, any other questions? No Correct. questions. Just comments. Uh, glad to see uh, support in the fifty-five and over and affordable housing. It's refreshing to see it without in lieu uh, fee. Uh, so just want to make that assessment. <laughs> Quite well made, Brad. Thank you. <laughs> That said, any other motion would be in order then. It's Commissioner Rose, I'll make a motion. Having reviewed the petition and considered um, the consistency statement prepared by staff to approve this petition, I move that we recommend approval of petition number 2022-142 as it appears before us and the adoption of the consistency statement as it, as it appears before us. Harvey, second. Properly moved by Rhodes, seconded by Harvey. All in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? That's unanimous, 5-0. And item number 17 in our rezoning book, rezoning petition 2022-150 by Lakeisha Stevenson. Emma, let's take it away. Hello. So um, this is petition 2022-015. It is approximately 0.88 acres located on the south side of Hickory Grove, Hickory Grove Road, East of East W.T. Harris Boulevard and south of Robinson Church Road. The current zoning is R3, single-family residential, and the proposed zoning is R8, single-family residential. The 2040 policy map calls for neighborhood one place type. This is a conventional petition, and staff does recommend approval for this petition and the petition is consistent with the 2040 policy map recommendation for the neighborhood one place type i will take any questions if the zoning committee has any as long as it's not about consistency you all love me we do, we do. <laughs> um this one is uh by right or not by right pardon me is conventional so keep that in mind <laughs> Uh, does anyone have a question comment you know i'm going to do better i made a promise to staff as well moving forward um getting my questions ahead of time but um on this one um this is for cdot you know i know you guys know that this particular parcel is in a high injury network area um that there are um exceedances of the 85 percentile and speed limits and um, are there any other safety improvements uh, um, on or near or at this particular parcel that we can refer to to make sure that we can hopefully get to adding number five into a safe equitable transportation um, for this particular zoning hey terry it's jake uh so 
at this point for rezoning petitions, we uh, we don't do any transportation <clears throat> reviews and all of that's handled in permitting because they're not making any commitments. So uh, I'm not aware of any uh, safety improvements along this corridor, but uh, we would we would review any driveway locations, et cetera, uh, pedestrian accommodations and make sure that they all conform to uh, standards for uh, the street type and land use and location. Great, I appreciate that. And, and I, if I recall correctly, that was some of the the comments that we heard um, in the hearing as well about the concerns for safety. Um, we don't want to limit the petitioner on this one, but um, we do have to find resolutions uh, within CDOT about how uh, safe our roads are um, as we start start these processes down. So thanks. Good point. Any other questions? I'm going to stall for a moment while we get our final commissioner back. You guys like me to ask about consistent? <laughs> okay. By the way, next month. Yes. What? We're bringing right the fire. <laughs> I will be. I. I will be having more time with the policy map. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm ready. I was gonna like, I have to scripts. You know the the, the but these. Were, and I will ask you just a procedural question. In June, do these or July, whatever, do these things change a whole lot in terms of consistency, not consistent with, or if it's conventional, we not have that. We would possibly not have that as an issue, right? I mean, if well, it like it's auto translated from R three to M3. yeah, yeah. It's still just all other in one, but we're at least, I don't know. That's a yeah. Good all right. I mean, <laughs> if I may, you can finish that in just a moment. Set another <laughs> Does anyone like to make a motion on this one? I will. Go right ahead. I reviewed the petition and considered the consistency statement prepared by staff to approve this petition. I move that we recommend approval of petition number 2022-150 as it appears before us and the adoption of the consistency statement. This is Welton, I'll second. Properly moved, well, properly moved by Harvey, seconded by Welton. All in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? That passes 5-0. And I will make one just I would recommend uh, because I've stumbled into this before the zoning committee go ahead and take down those dates that we approved at the beginning of this meeting so that you can go ahead and start marking your calendar and stay available other than that I we were we will revise the zoning committee schedule that we send to you guys and resend it and that'll be there yep so you'll get um, of it. I'll dismiss unless there's objection well just a quick question yeah I think there was some confusion about the meeting tonight like a 530 start, a six o'clock start, and is there a when in the invitations, just a clarification just for me? I'm just yeah, it'll be five thirty. I think I got two different emails at two different times on the invite. So it's just maybe it was just me, but I'll I'll double check that. I think one said 